Welcome to Excel North America. Thanks for visiting with us today. We would like to introduce you to the Kremlin Cyclomix Micro. The Micro is our most economical 2K meter and mix machine. Today we want to show you how to install, set the parameters, start up, and operate this system. But before we do all that, Let's review the features and benefits of this latest addition to our 2K product line. The Cyclomix Micro is small, compact, and easily affordable. Precision control with alarm. It will sound an audible alarm when a fault occurs. It has the ability to use up to three colors with a single hardener. Very flexible with the number of colors. Control cabinet can be mounted so it can be operated from inside or outside the spray booth. It can be used with HVLP, air spray, or air mix spray technologies. This is how you will receive your Cyclomix Micro. You can see it is manufactured in two pieces, the control panel and the mixing panel. At this time, let us review the specifications of the Micro. It has one to three colors depending on the version selected and mixing ratios of 0.6 to 1 to 20 to 1. It has a mixing accuracy of plus or minus 1% and a repeatability of plus or minus 0.5%. With a flow output of 50 to 2000 cc's a minute. The viscosity range is 30 to 5,000 centipoise. And it has a working data storage for base, catalyst, and VOC. With an RS-232 port for reporting and printing, if desirable. All wetted parts are stainless steel and a material ratio testing is included. This is what your Cyclomix Micro is going to look like once you start to get it assembled. And there are several inputs that we need to talk about. First of all, you're going to need an airline coming into it. It's going to have to be a clean, dry, filtered airline, and it's going to be hooked up to the port marked R1. The outlet port is the one marked R2 and provided with the machine is a ball valve that you can use for shutting off the atomizing air while you're doing flush cycles and filling sequences. The other uh, input that you're going to need is either a 110 volt or 220 volt input depending on your selection. But make sure that when you do this that in the back of the control panel there is a jumper connector that has to be in the correct position for the voltage that you want. The next inputs we want to talk about are the fluid inputs. First of all, we'd like to start with the resin input, which comes into this port here on the CTM valve. This side of the CTM valve is for the color. This system is set up for one color plus the other side which is solvent. If it was a three color machine there would be another CTM block stacked on top of this one to give you the other two uh, resin inlets. Coming out of the CTM valve we have a hose which goes up to this elbow and into a check valve. This is a spring-loaded check valve that prevents crossover. Coming through there we go into the resin flow meter and out through these fittings into a three-way ball valve. Going into the mixer block 
down through the static mixer, which is this black hose. This black hose is completely filled with static mixer elements, so we're going to mix that material several million times. Coming into this fitting here, this is where the catalyst enters the machine and goes in through another one of those check valves, going into the catalyst flow meter and out into the valve marked VP6. VP6 is our catalyst injection valve. When we get counts of resin, we will open up VP6 and get the correct amount of counts of catalyst, allowing us to inject the specific amount into the stream of resin that goes through the static mixer. At that point, we have delivered mixed material to the spray gun. We have taken this flow meter apart so that you can see the inside of it and we can explain exactly how it works. The fluid comes in through the inlet port and it comes up into this area right here. The gears will start to turn be due to the pressure of the material forcing them into motion. The teeth and or the area between two teeth will fill up with fluid and they will be turning in this direction. As you can see, both sides will fill up and it will form what I refer to as buckets. Between two teeth is a small amount of material, about 0.24 uh, cc's of fluid, and as they get delivered around to the output, they will be carried and they will be unloaded when they get to the top. When they get to the top, they go out through this area right here and they will end up flowing out through the outlet of the flow meter. This is a very precision instrument and it is absolutely necessary that you understand that no one should drive a screwdriver between these two flanges or any metal instrument in here to remove uh, the two halves. If you do this, you're going to scratch it, you're going to nick it, and you will not get the same functionality that if, if it was perfectly smooth. Uh, it must be taken apart very carefully and uh, cleaned out occasionally. Uh, you can now understand that one speck of dirt coming into this flow meter, if it lodges itself between the two gears, it can stop the two gears from turning. Uh, this would create a problem, a fault condition in the machine, and of course it would alarm. Uh, this is the reason why Filtration is so important on this, these types of systems so that the, there isn't any possibility of getting a piece of trash getting caught between these two gears. This is the check valve used in the system and it has an arrow on it to indicate the direction of flow. I'd like to take this apart to show you the inside and as I unscrew the body you will notice that it comes apart with a spring. So it is a ball type check valve with a spring return. Here is the ball and if you look down in here you can see a chamfered seat. So that is the check valve assembly exactly how it gets taken apart and how it works. This is the catalyst flow meter now and I want to discuss the sensor the sensor is the electronic device that picks up the signal and counts the teeth as they pass underneath it. We want to show you how to disconnect it, so we're going to unscrew the cable from it and show you what it's all about. You unscrew the sensor and you can see that it's not very tight. We do not ever want to have anyone use a wrench on this. Even though it has flats, you must not use a wrench on this because if you do, you may push this into the upper flange and create a dent in the top of, the of this housing here. Do not abrade this in any way because damaging this, this is where we read the tooth as it goes by and that tooth gives us the account. The count tells us that for every one of the teeth it counts, it delivers 
0.24 cc's of material into the system. The sensor must be put back in very gently, of course, not damaging it, and just tighten it by hand. Do not use a wrench on these flats. Of course, always make sure that you've put the uh, cable back in place, pushed it down, and make sure that you have it all the way in in order to get the correct reading. On display we have two pages from the microservice manual, page 16 and page 17. These are the pages where they direct you to install your parameters and also give you the ability to record the parameters that you have put in there. On page 16 it is set up for a system without catalyst flushing. On page 17 it is if you had a machine with catalyst flushing and it includes an extra parameter for catalyst flushing volume, uh, parameter 1-5. In the third column over, you will notice that it says factory adjustment, and this gives you the column of the preset parameters that they have put in at the factory. This will allow you to start the machine up and flush it out prior to you putting in your adjustments in the next three columns for color one, two, and three. This gives you the ability to add in your parameters and record them for future reference if for some reason you would lose that information. Go up, an arrow down to make the number go down. On the right hand side we have an escape key and we also have a validation key. So I'm going to try to go to F3. According to my cheat sheet up here, F3 is parameters. So I'm going to arrow up F2 and F3. Then I'm going to validate. And now I'm at parameter color 1, parameter 1. The flashing light tells us we're at parameter 1. If I validate again, I will see that we're at 100. 100 is the factory setting for the mix ratio. If we're at 100, that is telling me that we have a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Let's say, for instance, we want to go to a two-to-one mix ratio. We would now change this percentage down to 50%, and to do that, we have to hold the magnet, and if we hold it in front of the number, it will kind of move very quickly so that we can go down fast, down to 50 as you get closer you now wave the magnet in front of it and it will go a little bit slower and then one at a time until you get to 50 and then you validate it if you want to check it you can go back in and look at it and then validate it again and now I'm at back at the home position which is parameter one now I'm going to go up by going to parameter two and now I will validate it to go to parameter two we have now advanced to parameter two parameter two is the pot life Remembering that the pot life, the definition of pot life, is the time it takes for the viscosity to double. The paint company will give you the pot life. You may want to reduce that a little bit because you might want to make sure that the pot life is the correct amount of time. For instance, if the, if the paint company says two hours, you might want to make it one hour. So let's validate this. and you can see that the number 100 is displayed. That's in minutes, that's 100 minutes. So I'm gonna make it 60 minutes because if I have a two hour pot life, I might wanna know ahead of time. So I'm gonna hold this here until I come down to 60. Whoops, went a little too far. And when I go too far, I just merely need to go back up again until I get it to the desired number and now I've set it. 
I validate it, and now I'm back to the home position. The pot life, what will happen if I lay the gun down and let it sit now? Maybe I go to lunch. In one hour, the pot life alarm will go off. The red light will appear up here as a fault, and I will sound an audible alarm, notifying the operator that someone has to advance material or flush the system out. We're now going to parameter three, which is the regeneration volume. We do that by actuating the magnet until we get the number three, and then we'll see that 5,000 cc's is displayed. 5,000 cc's is referred to as the regeneration volume. I also refer to it as the fill volume. This is the amount that when you're starting up will be dispensed to clear out the previous solvent and fill it with freshly mixed material. It will also be used if you were to get a pot life alarm, you would have to advance that amount of material through the hoses and empty it out and fill it with freshly mixed material before you would be allowed to go back into production. It is the amount that's in the hose plus a little bit more so if you had 25 foot of quarter inch hose, you would probably have about six ounces of material in there. If you double that and make it 12 ounces of material, you would have approximately 360 cc's. So I'm gonna change this by actuating the, um, the, the reed switch here down to 360 cc's. As we go down, I hold it close, and it moves fast again. And now, I'm at 360, I validate, and now I'm ready to go on to parameter four. Now we move on to parameter four. We do this by actuating the number upward by the arrow and then we validate. Parameter four is our flushing volume and it's factory preset at 500 cc's. The minimum value you can set it at is 10 cc's and the maximum value is 10,000 cc's. Of course, this has to do with the amount of material that's in your hose. Again, if you have a 25-foot hose, you probably have approximately six ounces uh, in it. Uh, of course, you also have to include the uh, static mixer and a little bit uh, from the uh, mix manifold. So if we were to double that again, we would actually go again to that 12 ounces, which is 360 cc's. So I'm going to arrow down, take that number down to 360 and that's going to give us a, a reasonable amount of uh, flushing solvent. Of course, you want to look at it at the end of the, the uh, duration and make sure that you do have good, clean solvent coming out, that you've flushed out the uh, entire area and the hose and the gun. When, you, when we're done with that, we merely validate again, and now we're on to parameter number five. Now we're on to parameter five. We go there, of course, by arrowing up to the number five, then we validate, and you can see the factory preset number at 5%. This, has, this parameter has a minimum value of 1% and a maximum value of 100%. This is our mixing tolerance, so we generally want to have this between the range of probably a 1% mixing accuracy or a two or three percent. So I'm going to set this at three percent. And then I'm going to validate it so it's got a three percent mixing ratio. That tells us that if we are outside of that limit three, more than three reporting times in a row, 
it will give us a fault condition. That means the red light will come on, the machine will shut down, and we will have an audible signal. We're now ready to go on to parameter six. We're now ready to move on to parameter six. We do that, of course, by swiping the magnet up to number six and validating. You now see that we're at 55%, which is this parameter is referred to in the manual as the fluid dry extract, which is the solids amount in the paint. Uh, we re try to refer to that as the amount of solvent in the paint. So if we truly did have a 55% uh, solids in the paint, we would have a 45% solvent uh, or the amount of solvent that's in the paint. So I'm going to change that so that we have a direct readout of the solvent rather than the solids. So I'm going to change this to 45 and validate it. And now, of course, if I go back in, we actually use that as a direct readout of 45% solvent rather than 55% of the solids. We would really much rather know the amount of solvent in the paint rather than the solids. So then, of course, I would validate again, and we would be on to parameter number seven. Now we're on the parameter number seven. Of course, we do that by swiping the magnet again, the arrow up to seven, and then validating. You'll notice that 0.24 comes up, and this happens to be the parameter of volume by tooth of the base flow meter. In other words, for every tooth, we deliver 0.24 cc's of base. That's the bucket that I was talking about in the flow meter. We cannot change this because this is set by the flow meter itself. So please do not change this unless you change the flow meter, then it might be necessary. But as of right now, with this system, we're checking 0.24. It should be there. Just double check to make sure that it is and then, of course, validate it and move on to parameter number eight. Now we're on to parameter number eight, and of course, we validate it again, and 0.24 comes up. This is the same as parameter number seven, only this is the parameter of volume by tooth of the catalyst flow meter. Again, this is 0.24 and it must stay there. So just double check it to make sure that it is on 0.24 and then validate it and continue on to parameter number nine. We're now on to parameter number nine. We do that by swiping the arrow up and validating. And now we can see the number six on the screen which stands for six seconds. That's the maximum value you can have on this parameter, with one second being the minimum. This parameter is the time between the atomizing air opening and the fluid opening before you get a fault or an alarm. Inside the machine, we have an air flow switch. And when we trigger the gun, the atomizing air triggers the flow switch. This tells the machine that we must very quickly get some counts from the base flow meter. And if we don't get those counts within six seconds, the machine will go into a fault. You will get a base flow meter fault and the alarm will go off. This will alarm the operator to the fact that something is wrong. This parameter prevents the operator from using the spray gun as a dusting gun because in six seconds or less, he will cause a fault condition. The fault will display as an error one, which is a base flow meter fault. This will make it necessary for the operator to have a blow gun nearby to dust off parts before spraying. 
This concludes setting the parameters with a machine that does not have catalyst flush. If your machine has catalyst flush, you will have an additional CTM on the catalyst inlet and you have an additional parameter to set and that will be catalyst flush volume. To exit from parameter 9, you would merely validate it and then to exit from the parameters part of the program, you would hit escape. Now we're back to F3 and in order to go to F1, which would be production, you would merely arrow up to F1. We've now come back to F1, color 1, and we have the yellow and green light on, so it is waiting for a command. We want to go to color 2, so at this point, we're going to swipe escape. Now what appears is F1, A flashing 1. But we want to go to color 2, so we're going to arrow up to color 2 or color 3, depending on which one you want to go to. I'm going to select to go to color 2, and then I'm going to validate it. Now we are in F1, color 2. But now I want to change my, I want to set my parameters for color 2. I'm going to go to F3 to set the parameters, and then I'm going to validate it. Now you can see that the parameter number 1 for color 2 is in the window. Of course, what do I do? I validate it again, and the first parameter comes up to be changed. Now you can set all the parameters independently from the other two colors.